Hi, and welcome to part 4A of the Hive's PCB Design with KiCad series. My name is Ben, and I'll be your guide today. Part 4 as a whole will be covering the entirety of the schematic uh, creation process, uh, specifically part 4A, which is this video, will look at the schematic capture window for the first time and detail uh, how to add symbols to the design. If you watched part 3, you might remember that in our design flow, there was a project setup and library creation step. Due to the relative simplicity of this design and that library management was not covered during the original workshop that this tutorial is based off of, we're actually going to leave all of the library creation to part six and seven. Uh, however, I do strongly advise that you watch through those if you're considering doing design more seriously. Anyway, let's get into KiCad. Before we get into the actual software, this is just a reminder of the flashlight circuit we're developing. Uh, note that this image was taken, uh, was not taken from KiCad, excuse me, and therefore the symbols and graphics are different than you're all about to see. Open KiCad, uh, however you normally open software. Uh, as an aside, uh, I did these slides in Windows 10 using KiCad 7. If you're using a different operating system or a different version of KiCad, some of the graphics and visuals may look different or have slightly different wording from these slides, but the concepts should still hold. So this is the first window that should open. It's called the Project Manager. From here, you will manage your project. Uh, it usually opens to some old project you've done, but not necessarily the last project you work on, worked on, oddly enough. Um, but since we're obviously starting a new project, we're going to go ahead and uh, create a new project under File, New Project, which will bring up a save window. Um, name it and save it however and wherever you'd like. Um, I personally saved it as Switched LED Version V0, but I don't think that was the best name. Um, I also always like to check the box at the bottom that says create a new folder for this project that's being highlighted by the arrow. Um, obviously, I could create the folder myself, but it's easy enough to check that box and it keeps everything into its nice, um, safe little home. Great. So this brings our project into the project manager and shows us the project structure. This isn't really a directory structure, though it looks like one. Uh, KiCad. Um, it's more just like all of the related files that are um, associated with the project file itself. Um, KiCad will make backups of your project as well at predefined intervals, uh, which can be see set within the preferences and are saved within that backups folder. On the right hand side are various shortcuts to the different tools that KiCad offers and we'll be going through some of these um, as we go through these tutorials as well. The two important files are the schematic file with the extension .kicad underscore sch and the layout file with the extension .kicad pcb. So let's uh, open up the, the schematic and start placing components by either double clicking on the schematic file or clicking the schematic editor icon on the right. So this is the blank schematic view. The title block defaults to A4 size. You can change that and adjust the text within it under the page settings, under file page settings. Uh, you can pretty much safely ignore it entirely if you'd like. Um, there's no limit and it's not a boundary to anything. It's simply just an easy way to identify where your print edges would be if you were going to print a hard copy of this. Um, there is also a way to actually remove it, but it requires making a custom drawing sheet, which isn't hard. It's just beyond the scope of this video. The mouse is the crosshair icon that's normally in the middle by default. Um, units in grid settings are all located on the upper left. This is pretty much where they'll always be in every window in KiCad. The left-hand side of the editor is the schematic hierarchy. For larger or more complex designs, it can be useful to separate the full schematic into multiple sheets. Um, each sheet would then show up here in its um, correct kind of tree structure. The right-hand side of the window has a toolbar that I'll call the action toolbar with shortcuts that have many different useful actions to them. You don't have to memorize these, I'm just highlighting them here and I'll go through them as we need, point them out again as we need them. But these include adding symbols, adding power symbols, adding wires, no connection flags, junctions, labels, global labels, text and shapes as well. 
All of these actions have a hotkey assigned with them, which I've um, put in parentheses, and can also be adjusted in the preference menu, or you can hit Control and F1 to get a list of all of the currently available shortcuts as well. Uh, one more time with the circuit reminder, we're going to start um, adding symbols now. We'll start with the generic symbols like the resistor, LED, batteries, and so on. And then we will do the switch. Uh, the IC, the chip in the middle, will come last. So to add a symbol to the schematic, tap the A key on your keyboard or click the icon identified in the actions toolbar here. It's the um, top one that looks, vaguely, it looks like an operational amplifier, if you're familiar with those. Uh, this will open up the add symbols window. There are nearly 20,000 symbols built into KiCad, so one of the questions is how do we actually narrow that down? Um, one way is to use the filter at the top of the window. There. Um, although that may not always be as helpful as we'd like and can potentially be actually even more confusing. Um, filtering by resistor here, you can see that there are lots of different resistor icons and options. Um, scrolling through these can help, but only really if there aren't like a thousand of them, you know? Alternatively, you can just, if you know the library, you can just open to that library directly. Many, even most, although not all, as we'll see, generic components um, can be found in the device library. Uh, you'll still have to scroll, but by filtering and locating that library, you can help narrow it down to exactly what you're looking for, even if you don't know the exact name of it. So uh, I'd recommend going ahead and pausing the video here to try to locate the resistor um, within the device library. There are two resistor symbols that you may have found. The If you just found the one named R, you might have noticed that that didn't look right. That's because the box-like symbol is the international version of the resistor symbol. In the US, this would be seen as an unknown impedance symbol, not a resistor. Um, if you looked a little harder, perhaps, um, you might have located the US version of the symbol named R underscore US. Either is totally fine, especially for this tutorial. Remember that the uh, that the schematic is for you, your colleagues, your boss, and your future selves to read. So use whichever symbols you'll best be able to communicate your intentions to your boss or your future self with. So click OK to select uh, the um, whichever symbol you chose. The Add Symbol window will return you to whatever zoom depth and viewing location you were at when you opened it. So let's zoom in here with the scroll wheel or whatever trackpad combination you use for zooming. Um, note that this is where, again, a three-button mouse is really nice to have for all kind of CAD softwares. So this looks a little bit better. Um, you can orient the symbol prior to, prior to placement by actually rotating it with R or mirroring it with X or Y. Once you're good with the rotation and the placement, you left-click to place it. Um, again, you can click it, you can place it wherever you'd like. There's no limitations, even outside the title box is fine, but um, it does look better if it's in the title box. After you've placed it, there are three options. We can left click to open the symbol window again. You can right click to open a context menu for things like additional rotating, properties, duplicating, and other um, edits. Or you can hit the escape key to exit out of this kind of add symbol mode. Let's just left click again to add the next symbol, which is the battery. Like the resistor, the battery is a standard symbol, so there is a reasonable expectation that we can find it, the symbol for it in the device library. If we filter by battery, we'll see that there are actually two. One's called battery for a multi-cell battery, and the other one called battery underscore cell for a single cell battery. Remember, since the schematic is for you and your boss to read and your future selves, use whichever is going to be more informative. If it's important that you use a multi-cell battery for this, then use that sim symbol. Otherwise, you can go ahead and use the single cell symbol. I will, in this tutorial, use the single cell symbol, par also partially because we're using only a single cell battery. Place the battery symbol on the schematic. It's not really critical where it is right now since we'll move most of this around later. I also mirrored the symbol about why because I prefer the text to the left. Uh, let's um, open the add symbol window again by left clicking, or you can open that by the icon uh, if you've already escaped out. Let's look at the, looking in the devices library again gives us an LED symbol, um, and we're going to add one to the schematic. Now, there are actually a couple of LED symbols, but I'll talk about that a bit later. So I got too excited and I clicked a little too fast, and I ended up putting it below the resistor accidentally. 
Um, thankfully, it's really easy to move stuff around. Um, you can just left click and drag it to move if you'd like. Um, click or hover over the click on the symbol or hover over it and hit M to enter the move uh, like mode. Um, or you can find move under the right click context menu as well. Um, once you've kind of starting to move around, left click again to move it uh, to place it wherever you'd like again. You can also left click and drag to select more than one object in KaiKen. Anyway, this is where I've placed it above the resistor like it's uh, nominally should be. Um, now I'm going to use the duplicate feature to make the other LEDs. But wait, if we add the footprint uh, to make the other LEDs, but if we add the footprint to the LED first and a value if we wanted to, we wouldn't have to add the value or footprints, value the footprints or the values, excuse me, to the other LED symbols later. Adding a footprint can be a bit of a lengthier process. It takes a bunch of clicks and some open windows. So it can be t quite time saving to add the, the, the footprint first and then duplicate that symbol a bunch of times um, if you have many duplicate components. So to assign a footprint or value, um, we'll open the symbols property win properties window. Uh, so select on the symbol or hover over it and press E or you can select properties from the context menu. That's a right click on the symbol. So this window has a lot of options. You can adjust the symbol's value here, which I'll talk about later in a later video. Um, by adjusting the value field's value, this is a bit confusing, but it's where it currently says LED there in the middle. Um, for an LED, you might put a value of green or red here for a resistor. You might put 1K for a capacitor. You might put 1U, for example. Units are pretty much never in, uh, included in the symbol's value. Uh, this is a historical artifact, I think, coupled with the fact that you can't actually add symbols like omega into the field. So sometimes units, um, it's easier just to make everything unitless instead of some units and some not. Most of this window isn't particularly relevant right now. But to so to assign or change a footprint, you're gonna click the footprint box, that's the one highlighted here, and then um, the three little book icon on the right, which indicates a uh, library. This will open up the footprint browser, which shows all of the available footprints and all the available libraries. On the top left, we're gonna filter by LED to see what's available. So there's a lot of footprints here still in also two uh, libraries. It's critical to make sure that the footprint that you select will actually fit the part you're using, even though there might be multiple options, uh, multiple footprints that could work. Since we're using a through hole LED, Let's select the LED underscore THT library to search there. Um, there's still a lot of options here, but uh, there's a couple of tricks. Um, the D in the footprint name generally means diameter. Uh, since we know we're looking for a five millimeter diameter two lead LED that does narrow down our search. So if we look, we get, there's a couple of different um, D five millimeter options. Um, some of these have additional information in the name, like a dash three for three pin or a clear for a clear dome. We could also select a horizontally oriented model here if we knew it needed to be horizontal. You can also check the 3D model of the part by clicking this icon here, highlighted by the red arrow. Um, but since we're just using a standard five millimeter LED, I'm just gonna double click on the LED underscore D5.0 mm footprint to assign it. Great, so the footprint's assigned, and we know that because it's in the footprint value box, so go ahead and click OK in the lower right. It's not really obvious what's been different, but you can check that the footprint's been assigned by looking in the bottom, kind of the bottom, um, bottom bar there. Uh, it's not super obvious, but it is located right here where the arrow is pointing. Now that we've nominally assigned a footprint and potentially a value to our part, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate it. Um, so just select the part and click Control D to duplicate or find duplicate in the context menu again. Um, just go ahead and make three copies. Um, we might note that copy paste will also probably work and I'm frankly not really sure exactly what the difference between those two things is, but it's a same process really. Great, so yours might look something like this, but um, important to know, and this is the first time we might note, we, I'm gonna mention this, but not the last, your schematic will almost, almost certainly look different than mine, and that's totally okay. 
There are many different ways to put a schematic together, particularly given that you could place parts wherever you want. But as long as things are connected together in the correct manner, which is what we're going to worry about in two videos from now, uh, it's at least minimally functional, and that's the minimal sufficient sufficiency. Um, some there are like artistic flares that you can add or artistic rules that you can implement with a schematic, like how things are placed or specific design things, but um, minimally functional is really the important thing, especially as a hobbyist. So at this point, I'll recommend pausing the video again and trying going ahead and placing the inductor capacitors and the diode. That's the inductor uh, in the top left, the C in and C out capacitors, and the diode on top. Um, all three of these footprint, oh, sorry, symbols, all three of these symbols can be found in the device library again, but do be careful about the diode because the diode is actually a Schottky diode, not a regular diode, meaning where a regular diode just has a vertical line next to the triangle. The Schottky diode has that kind of weird backwards integral symbol looking thing, uh, slight, like has serifs basically on its line. Um, so go ahead and take a minute or two to go ahead and find and add those four parts. Again, you can add them wherever you want in the schematic. We're going to be rearranging things later. Great. So hopefully you didn't struggle too much with that. Uh, but by now you should have 10 symbols, these 10 symbols specifically. If we go back to the um, add symbol window, we're going to go look for the switch next. Um, if you filter by switch, you'll see lots of switches available but pretty much none in the device library, except for these two rotary encoders, which are not the type of switch that we need. Um, instead, switches are actually in their own library, which is completely um, uninterestingly called switches. Um, so if you look in there, uh, we might ask ourselves which one. Recall that the switch that we're using is a single pole, single throw, normally open switch which we can actually filter for directly by just typing in um, SPST and then looking in the switch library and you'll see a couple of options there. Um, I'm not actually sure what the difference between all four of those is and I didn't look, but uh, the first one is totally fine. Go ahead and just add it to the schematic. Great, and that will leave us with 11 components here and ready to add the integrated circuit symbol. But with that, we're going to uh, pause and end uh, part 4A of this tutorial series. Uh, we took um, a first look at our, our schematic capture video or view, um, and we added some of the basic components to our schematic. A PDF of this video is going to be available as well, linked either in the description as well as hosted on the um, Hives Wiki. So please join us for our next video, part 4B, in which we'll cover how to deal with the IC, which spoiler alert, alert, does not have a standard symbol. And we'll see you there.